The Sky is Your Bed by 6D Pegasus. And three, two, one, go! Twilight launched herself forward with all her strength, her wings propelling her fast enough to completely dispel the cloud she had been standing on. Her mane flew behind her and clear of her line of sight as the air whipped past her face. She narrowed her eyes as she took in the cloud obstacles Rainbow had set up for her this time. Three cloud rings of steadily decreasing size and a larger cloud wall with a narrow gap in the middle. As she rapidly approached the first cloud ring, Twilight remembered Rainbow's lessons from earlier that day and adjusted her heading with the slightest of wing movements to position herself dead center with the ring. She flapped her wings even harder, building up more and more speed. Right before she reached it, she tucked her wings tightly to her side and dived towards the middle. Her now much more aerodynamic shape allowed her to accelerate rapidly through the ring like a bullet leaving a barrel. Woo! Awesome job, Twy! Two more to go! You can do it! Tall ideas flicked towards the voice of her support, but she kept her eyes focused on the next ring. This one was angled slightly away from her, and rather off-center, meaning she'd have to pass through it coming out of a turn. Inhaling sharply, she rose her right wing ever so slightly above the center of mass, putting her into a wide, counterclockwise arc as she rapidly approached her target at its own angle. Again, right before reaching the ring, she tightly tucked her wings to her side, allowing her more streamlined form to slip through without dispelling so much as a single tuft of the cloud. Upon passing through, she quickly unfurled her wings to their fullest, the newfound resistance on her body bringing her down to a slightly safer speed. Feeling her left wing catch a sudden updraft, she adjusted her wings once again to properly utilize it. With a single strong flap of her left wing, she pushed off the updraft into a loose, clockwise roll, which she used to put herself back in the center of the obstacle course. Keep it up, Twy! One more, then show me the big finish! Twilight gazed forward and looked at her final obstacles. One final cloud ring floated ahead, angled slightly upwards. Behind it, and in line with the ring, floated a thick wall of clouds with a narrow, rectangular hole punched through it. She would have to approach the ring with a dive from above, then quickly make enough micro-adjustments to continue her dive right through the gap in the wall. She panted a little and felt her heart racing. It wasn't just from the excitement of finally gaining more control over her wings. This was her last flight exercise for the day, and her body was already aching from all the previous lessons. Still, she shook off the looming exhaustion, and with continuous flaps, propelled herself in a steady incline. Come on, Twilight! Last one today! Let's make this count! Twilight steeled herself as she reached the midpoint between the rings behind and in front of her. She ceased her flapping, and for a moment, felt her insides roll about as she briefly entered freefall. Here we go. Twilight inhaled sharply before angling her wings down, putting herself into a rapid, accelerating glide. She focused all her attention on the ring that loomed ahead of her, making all the necessary adjustments with her wings to keep her on course. She was almost there, almost through. She could see the hole in the cloud wall lined up perfectly with the approaching ring. As she had practiced, she tucked her wings tightly to her side one last time and passed straight through the ring without... Two of her primary feathers brushed against the cloud ring. While the feathers carried very little mass, the force of her dive was enough for that minuscule contact to pop the ring into nothingness. The slight contact had also completely derailed her dive, and with a surprised yelp, sent her into an uncontrolled spin as she hurtled off course. No, 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 no! Twilight panicked and began crazily flapping her wings every which way, desperate to regain control, but to no avail. Despite her spin, she could see the surface of the cloud wall rapidly approaching her. She squeezed her eyes shut and instinctively brought her hooves up to her face to protect it from the wall when... Twilight felt a pair of hooves wrap around her barrel, halting her uncontrolled spin barely a second before impact. She peeked her eyes open, 
still panting heavily, to stare at the wall of cloud hovering inches from her face. Finally, she let out a defeated sigh and reached up with a foreleg to poke at it as her wings drooped down tiredly to her sides. <laughs> Don't worry, Twilight. You'll get the hang of it in no time. Twilight turned her gaze up into the magenta eyes of her savior, a scion pegasus with a signature prismatic mane. She wore a mischievous yet gentle smile on her face. Twilight returned to the gesturing kind. <sighs> Thanks, Rainbow. What I would give to see what you looked like when you first got used to these... She emphasized the word with a soft ruffle of her feathers as she gazed at her wings. Things. Rainbow chuckled. <laughs> I doubt you'd get much entertainment watching a filly struggle with her wings. Trust me, with enough practice, you'll have the same awesome level of control of your wings that I do. She paused. Well, almost the same level. Twilight raised an eyebrow at her friend, who merely sheepishly shrugged in return. Her head drooped back down from exhaustion. <sighs> At least Cadence could fly before she became an alicorn, so she didn't have to deal with all this added stress. Rainbow hummed in thought. Mm, well, sure, she could probably fly totally fine by then, but unlike you, she now had to deal with the challenge of properly controlling her magic. I mean, just imagine Cadence at your age struggling to lift a couple of books. Twilight closed her eyes and followed her friend's suggestion. The thought of her full sitter, princess of love and ruler of the Crystal Empire, scrunching up her muzzle in pained concentration as she desperately tried to use her magic to remove a single book from a bookshelf, only to send the entire row of books tumbling down on her, elicited a somewhat guilty giggle. Rainbow carried her up to a cloud platform she had previously prepared and plopped her down. Upon having somewhat solid ground beneath her hooves, Twilight finally let out all her exhaustion from the day's training and let herself fall flat on her face, her legs and wings splayed out all around her. Rainbow chuckled at the sight. <laughs> wow! Twilight, you weren't even flying for a couple of hours and you're this puckered out already? Twilight groaned, too tired to even lift her head from the cloud. <sighs> I don't think I'll ever be doing aggressive, acrobatic flight for two hours straight in my life, Rainbow. Oh, come on, Twy. Like I told you, these exercises are to help give you complete control over your agility and endurance in the air. I know you've only had those wings for like, what, a couple weeks now? But sooner or later, you'll have to get used to them. So why not sooner? Twilight groaned again, this time too tired to even form a proper response. If you think that obstacle course was tough, wait until you see how the Wonderbolts practice every day. Finally, Twilight gathered enough strength to lift her head off the cloud and stare blankly into Rainbow's eyes. No. Her head then unceremoniously plopped back into the clouds. Her body was aching all over, and with the warmth of the sun on her back and the sound of wind filling her ears, Twilight could feel herself starting to doze off. Ugh. Well, uh. Twilight slowly but surely climbed back to her hooves. She shuffled about unsteady for a moment as she tried to regain her balance, the world seemingly spinning around her. Oh. Uh. Uh. Thanks, Rainbow, for the flight lessons today. Really means a lot to me. I think I'm going to go back home for a quick nap now. Twilight shakily cantered towards the edge of the cloud and scoured the landscape of Ponyville before her eyes settled on the Golden Oak Library. Her lips spread into a sleepy smile as she crouched down and prepared to take off when a hoof on her withers snopped her. Whoa, 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 slow down there, Twilight. I don't think you're in any state to fly right now. Twilight looked back at Rainbow, still smiling and eyes half open. What do you mean? I'm totally fine. Rainbow raised an eyebrow and gestured with her head at her wings. Confused, Twilight looked down at her own wings and saw that, despite being fully opened, they barely had the strength to rise from where they laid on the cloud around her. What? 
Carefully, Rainbow placed a hoof on her chest and pushed her back from the edge. The sight of her beloved library vanishing from view elicited a soft whimper from Twilight. But Rainbow, I need to take a nap. Yeah, you can do that, Twy. You've earned it. Twilight turned to gaze at Rainbow incredulously. But my library is too far down for you to go crashing into from this height. Besides, why do you want an app there specifically? Twilight cocked her head. Well, where else am I supposed to nap? Rainbow blinked. Wait, you've never... <sighs> A flicker of knowing realization flashed across her eyes. Her mischievous grin returned, her eyes sparkling with excitement. <laughs> Twilight, my friend, you're about to have possibly the best experience of your life. Twilight opened her mouth to protest, but Rainbow suddenly sped off into the distance before she could even get a word out. After a moment of silence, Twilight shakily crawled back towards the edge of the cloud to gaze longingly at her home. As much as she wanted to, she trusted her friend's judgment regarding her flight capacity. A quick mental check of her magic reserve showed that she did have enough energy to effectively teleport into her own bedroom, but her mind and body were just too exhausted. She didn't want to risk accidentally teleporting into some pony else's house, or worse, into a wall. All right, I'm back. Twilight turned around and saw, to her surprise, that Rainbow had gathered some extra clouds to widen the radius of their cloud platform. Rainbow, <sighs> She yawned. What's this for? Rainbow grinned back with a level of energy that rivaled Pinkie Pie. She puffed out her chest in pride. <clears throat> now that you have wings, you have the magic of all three types of ponies in you, including Pegasus magic. Therefore, the responsibility falls to me to show you what I'd like to call the second best thing about being a Pegasus pony. Twilight's muzzle scrunched in confusion. What? What's with the formal talk? And what would the first best thing about being a Pegasus pony be? Rainbow snorted. Pfft, having wings, duh. Come on, just bear with me here, Twy. You won't regret it. Twilight raised an eyebrow but said nothing else, which the Cyan Pegasus took a circuit to continue. Now, <clears throat> as you are well aware, your new Pegasus magic grants you the ability to manipulate the weather, and more importantly, the clouds. To emphasize her point, Rainbow stomped a hoof, sending a small puff of cloud up around her. Twilight nodded, still not entirely sure where this was going, but curious nonetheless. And with the ability to naturally manipulate clouds comes the ability to touch, handle, walk, and most importantly, lie on clouds. And since this is from your inherent Pegasus magic instead of a spell, you should be able to feel the clouds in a much better detail now, right? Twilight blinked. She hadn't actually thought of that. She recalled the last time she had visited Cloudsdale, she had cast a cloud walking spell on herself and her friends. It didn't work the same way as a pegasi walking on clouds. It created a sort of telekinetic barrier around the target, finely tuned to prevent it from breaking the surface of clouds. While it worked and allowed her to walk on the clouds, it made cloud surfaces feel a little bit like trampolines, and that she was wearing thick socks on all of her hooves. Now that she no longer needed that spell, though... She became suddenly conscious that the feel of cloud beneath her hooves felt significantly different from before. Turning her attention down, Twilight reached with a hoof to prod at the cloud surface. To her surprise, she could perfectly feel every curve and contour of it around her hoof, and for the first time realized just how remarkably soft it was. She'd been so focused on practicing her flight that she never stopped to learn the other things Pegasi could do. A soft giggle drew her attention back to Rainbow, who continued to watch her with an ecstatic grin. <laughs> Looks like you're starting to get it. She took to the sky and began flying in tight, excited circles around Twilight, who did her best to just stare forward to avoid getting motion sick. 
Now then, allow me the honor of introducing you to the amazing, awesome, ancient tradition of Pegasi ponies known as... Rainbow finished her little cyclone around Twilight and plopped right in front of her, her muzzle practically touching her own. Cloud napping! Twilight blinked, her mind racing to process the name. Yes, she had seen several Pegasi, especially Rainbow Dash, occasionally taking naps on the clouds after a long day of weather work, or in Rainbow's case, virtually at any time of the day. She hadn't really considered the fact that, with her new wings, it was something she could do now, since it was something she'd never really imagined herself doing anyway. Wait, I mean, I, I, I mean, yes, but what if I fall? And what if I fall asleep for too long and the wind blows me into the Everfree Forest or something? Rainbow just laughed in glee. <laughs> That's the best part. You won't. As a Pegasus, you sort of perfectly sink into the cloud, and not enough to fall through or get stuck or anything, but just enough so you have to be thrashing about pretty hard to fall off. And that's only if you get too small of a cloud. That's why I brought over a few more, just in case, and make this one a bit bigger. She paused. And now, the reason you're not sinking right now is because you're consciously standing up, so your magic will keep you on the surface for the sake of your balance. Also, for relatively small clouds like this one, your Pegasus magic will naturally trigger if you fall asleep on one, holding it in place. So, as long as there isn't a really strong wind or anything, you won't have to worry about the cloud drifting off to Celestia knows where. Twilight spluttered a little. Rainbow's explanation had mitigated her fears considerably, but the thought of doing it herself still felt a little... wrong to her. But is it... Is it fine to do that? Just nap out in the open like that? I don't see other Pegasi doing it that much, and, uh... Rainbow cut her off with a wave of her huff. Pfft, come on, Twy. How often did you used to look up at the sky before anyway? It's a lot more common than you think, trust me. In fact, it's to the point where most of us weather ponies added it to our list of responsibilities. Keeping an eye out for any napping Pegasi so nothing bad happens. And in all of Ponyville's history, there's only been one cloud napping related injury to date. And what happened with that case? Oh, dude tried to nap on a storm cloud. Totally his fault. Ah. Rainbow lightly punched her in the shoulder. Come on, Twy, give it a chance. I promise you'll love it. And if you don't, I won't bother you about it ever again. Promise. I mean, for Celestia's sake, I've seen you fall fast asleep on a messy pile of hardbound books before. <laughs> Rainbow shuddered at the thought. You can totally handle a cloud. Twilight shuffled awkwardly on her hooves. I don't know, Rainbow. I, uh... She looked back up at her friend and took in her expression of pure cheer. <laughs> she really does want me to experience this, doesn't she? She sighed in defeat and smiled back. <sighs> All right, I'll give it a try. Yes! Woo! Rainbow jumped up in an excited backwards loop. Twilight giggled, then stumbled a little on her hooves. Her exhaustion from the day was finally fully catching up to her, and she wanted nothing more than to lie down. Oh, oh okay, so, uh, what do I do? Rainbow trotted over and pat her head, much to her slight annoyance. Well, just pretend the cod's a bed simple as that. She took to the air and hovered directly beside her, giving Twilight the entirety of the cloud surface to use. Huh. A bed. Twilight stared longingly at the cloud's white, fluffy texture. Had it always looked that soft before? She slowly sat down on her haunches and ever so carefully leaned her upper body forward and lowered herself onto the cloud. She moved her forelegs in front of her and cautiously laid her head atop them. She felt the soft tufts of compressed water vapor tickle her belly as the soft surface of cloud sunk under her weight. The still fluffed up cloud around her sides pressed gently inward like a soft, gentle embrace. Yeah, this... this was nice. She let out a breath she didn't realize she'd been holding. <sighs> This is actually pretty nice, Rainbow. 
To her surprise, Rainbow laughed in amusement. <laughs> oh, come on, Twy, that's not how you do it. I brought you the whole cloud, you're gonna use the whole cloud. Twilight felt two hooves grab at her forelegs before yanking them forward and away from her head. Without the support of her front hooves, Twilight's head fell straight into the mess of the cloud, filling her vision with white. Hey! What was that for? I... I, uh... Huh. With her head now making full contact with the cloud, she once again realized just how incredibly soft it felt. The sensation of soft cloud against her cheeks, muzzle, neck, her everything. Ah, oh, pure bliss. Even if she took the softest pillow she had ever laid on in her life, it paled in comparison to this. What? Huh? Oh, Celestia. She closed her eyes and reached out fully with her senses to her entire body where the cloud made contact with her fur and took in just how <laughs> amazing and awesome it was. She kicked back her hind legs and fully unfurled her wings to maximize the amount of contact her body made with the cloud. For a brief moment, she contemplated how embarrassing the sight must look to a random passing Pegasus pony, Equestria's newest princess completely splayed out on a cloud above Ponyville for all the world to see. Then she felt the cloud below her shift around her, and all her concerns immediately melted away into the void of happiness and relaxation brought forth by this impossible bed. She heard Rainbow laugh from somewhere above. <laughs> Wow, Twy. I knew you'd be taken by surprise, but I didn't think you'd love it this much. Twilight sighed contentedly as she carelessly rolled around atop the cloud. Just like Rainbow had said previously, she could feel the surface of the cloud sink in closer to the center. And as she rolled towards the edge, the cloud sank down less and less, creating a sort of upward incline that Twilight knew she wouldn't be able to accidentally roll off of. Giving in to gravity, she went completely slack and let the cloud roll her back away from the edge. Oh, thanks so much for this, Rainbow. This is just so... so... <laughs> her higher brain function struggled against the oncoming fog of sleep to access her vast vocabulary. So... awesome. Rainbow snickered. <laughs> Careful, Twy. You're starting to sound like me there. And we both know there's only room in Equestria for one Rainbow Dash. Through shut eyes, Twilight imagined her friend striking one of her many signature midair poses. Anyway, I gotta help a few Pegasus nearby with preparing a rainfall plan for tomorrow at the edge of Ponyville. Sweet Apple Acres is due for its routine shower. But don't worry, I'll be keeping an eye out for you no matter how far I am. You just lay your head down and enjoy your nap. You've more than earned it after today. Twilight felt a gust of wind, followed by a whoosh that trailed away in the distance behind her, signaling her friend's departure. She wanted to lift a hoof to wave her friend off, but that would mean decreasing the total amount of surface area of her body in contact with the cloud, and that just wouldn't do. Sighing blissfully, Twilight rolled over again to return to her original position on her stomach, and turned her head so her right cheek rested softly on the surface of her makeshift bed. As much as she enjoyed the feel of the cloud on her entire face, she didn't want to risk accidentally smothering herself. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a funny headline? Newest Princess of Equestria found smothered to death after falling asleep on a cloud face down. She tried to giggle, but the blanket of sleep and drowsiness only permitted a soft exhale to be released from her nose. A drunk smile plastered across her face. A soft breeze blew by, and her ears instinctively flicked in its direction before flopping back to the sides of her head. Celestia's sun bathed her body in a gentle warmth, while the soft surface of her silvery, sleep-summoning cloud graced her with a slight chill like a pillow whose top remained forever as cool as its underside. The occasional brush of wind across her back felt like a continuous, soft, 
dreamy massage. She could hear the distant sound of the many ponies of Ponyville going about their day. Conversation and familiar voices, hooves clopping across dirt and gravel, doors opening and closing, wings flapping, and the gentle hum of unicorn's magic. It all blended together into a nearly incoherent swirl of white noise that lulled her mind to rest. Wow, and Rainbow does this on a daily basis? No wonder she naps so much. This is just so, so, hmm. Gradually, all the wonderful sensations around her turned even her internal thoughts into gibberish, and she gave in to the peace and bliss of sleep. Um, Princess? Hmm. Princess Twilight? Your Highness? Uh? Slowly, Twilight opened her eyes and groggily blinked the sleep out of them. A pair of light blue eyes on a light-furred, freckled face with an alternating green and pink mane similar to her own style stared back at her. Uh, hi, Princess. This area of Ponyville is scheduled for a sunny morning tomorrow, so, um, I'm going to have to move this cloud over to the side. If you want, you can keep napping on it after, but I can't move it while you're sleeping on it. Twilight smacked her lips briefly and shook her head to wake herself up some, before glancing around. The sun had fallen much closer to the horizon, adorning the lower sky in a beautiful orange and red glow. Based on where the sun had been before her nap, she estimated she must have been asleep for a little over an hour. The ambient sounds of Ponyville had died down significantly, as most ponies had already returned to their homes. Princess? Twilight blinked again, and turned to face the accompanying Pegasus, who stared at her expectantly. With a slight groan, she stretched her back before climbing to all four hooves. <sighs> no, no, it's fine. I need to get home anyway. Thanks, Blossom Forth. She smiled gently. And, you know, I may be a princess now, but I'm also still your friendly local librarian. You can still just call me Twilight. Uh, no worries, uh, Twilight. Twilight unfurled her wings and easily opened them to their fullest length. She gave them a few gentle flaps to confirm that her nap had successfully restored much of her physical energy. She'd have no problem making her way back down to the library now. Her ears flicked behind her at the sound of a distant whoosh. She turned around and saw a rainbow contrail zoom away from a nearby tree below her. True to her word and her element, it seemed Rainbow had indeed kept watch over her as she slept. A soft smile crept across her face. Well, nice seeing you, Blossom Forth. I've got to get home. Spike's probably made dinner already. After receiving a nod from the Pegasus, Twilight made her way to the edge of the cloud, and with many hours of practice under her belt, launched herself off with a powerful flap towards her treehouse, library, and home. Twilight groaned, rolling about in her bed underneath her covers. Her bed was perfectly comfortable. After all, she had been sleeping in it for years now, ever since she moved to Ponyville from Canterlot. It had taken her a little bit of time to adjust to the new environment, but she had happily settled in soon enough. And for years, it had served her well, acting as a beacon of peace and tranquility that called to her wherever she was whenever exhaustion began to plague her mind. And for just as long, she had slept soundly in it without a single issue or complaint. But now? Now something was off. Something was missing. It brought her great shame as she lingered on the thought, shifting around in her bed desperately to recapture that experience. Her blanket was perfect. Her pillows were perfect. Her mattress was perfect. 
The warm air in the library was perfect. She had even learned from Rainbow how to keep her wings from popping straight out randomly during the night. The bed was perfect. Everything was perfect. But it just wasn't... wasn't... It wasn't a cloud. With a defeated groan, Twilight tossed her blanket off her and clambered out of the bed. She got to all four hooves, her wings tiredly drooping at her sides. She spared a quick peek at Spike's basket to make sure he was still asleep, and a gentle snore checked that off the mental checklist. Quietly, she walked over to her window and gazed at the sky. Luna's moon shone brightly down on Equestria, bathing the land in a soft, silvery glow. Stars littered the dark canvas in beautiful swirls and patterns, courtesy of Luna's precise dedication to enhancing the beauty of her night. Twilight scanned the sky, narrowing her eyes in focus, until she found what she was looking for. There, off in the distance over Sweet Apple Acres, was a large collection of soft white clouds. Twilight recalled the forum was scheduled for a light morning shower tomorrow, and based off the color of the clouds, she guessed the weather ponies hadn't seeded them for rain yet. Drawing on her now vastly increased reserve of magic, as well as years and years of study dedicated to honing her talent, Twilight reached out to the sky above Sweet Apple Acres and felt the soft tufts of water vapor making up the clouds hovering above. She squeezed her eyes shut and pictured their shape, their size, their texture in her mind's eye. She imagined a somewhat small section of one of the clouds breaking off, then focused all her mind on feeling this new, smaller cloud's shape and size, as if she were touching it with her hooves. Finally, once she was certain she had captured the entire image in her mind, she pictured the cloud disappearing and reappearing beside her, while pouring the right amount of magic into the carefully constructed spell matrix in her horn. Slowly, Twilight opened her eyes and returned her focus to the clouds above Sweet Apple Acres. One of the clouds now had a small, rectangular-shaped hole cut into the side of it. She turned around to face her bed, and was delighted to be met with the sight of a small cloud of equal size and shape hovering just above her head. Excitedly, she clapped her hooves together and let out a squeal, like a delighted school filly would when seeing their candy yield after a long nightmare night. She quickly cast a few restraining spells on the edges of the cloud to ensure it stayed right where it was. Even though Rainbow had assured her it shouldn't move while she napped, she didn't want to risk the cloud dispersing upon making contact with a nearby bookshelf, sending her tumbling to the floor. Or worse, tumbling down onto Spike. If that happened, he would never let her live it down. Once she was confident enough, Twilight unfurled her wings, and with a single flap, leapt up onto her cloud. Immediately, she was overwhelmed by the comforting embrace of the cloud's soft surface as she sank slightly into the middle. She splayed out her wings and hooves to allow for maximum surface contact, and hummed happily to herself. Deep down, she knew she probably shouldn't make this a habit. She already had a bed, and if she kept this up, she'd never want to sleep in it again. Not to mention, Spike would probably be crushed seeing her like this every night, knowing that he lacked the ability that made this full, blissful experience a reality. She made a mental alarm with her magic to gently wake her up as soon as Spike began to stir. She would also have to talk to Rainbow tomorrow and, embarrassingly, ask for advice on how to resist the temptation to just sleep in a cloud bed every night instead of her normal bed. Other than her furniture, Rainbow's entire house was made of clouds, so if any pony knew that secret, it would be her. As much as it pained her on the inside, Twilight assured herself that this was not a permanent thing. Just, just one night, just one. She sighed contentedly as she nuzzled the surface of the cloud with her cheek and buried herself deeper into its soft, cool embrace, already feeling the fog of sleep envelop her once more. After all, just one night couldn't hurt. 